Hello and welcome back. Today we will talk about a topic जिसके बारे में मैं बहुत दिनों से एक वीडियो बनाना चाह रहा था पर नहीं हो पाया वो है बोस फैमिली के ऊपर ये मुद्दा इसलिए इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि हम इंडियंस में अभी भी थोड़ा सा डायनास्टिक मेंटेलिटी रह गया है इसलिए जब भी कोई डेवलपमेंट हो नेताजी के बारे में सो बी द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया और द प्रिंट मीडिया दे रन टू द बोस फैमिली किसी भी बोस को पकड़ के एक बाइक लेना जरूरी हो जाता है हम लोगों के लिए कोई इवेंट हो कोई लेक्चर हो या सेमिनार हो या कोई और इवेंट हो तो नेताजी के नाम पे बोस फैमिली से किसी को ले आना बहुत जरूरी हो जाता है सो दिस इज बिकम काइंड ऑफ कस्टमरी बट दैट इज नॉट द प्रॉब्लम द प्रॉब्लम इज दैट बोस फैमिली के व्यूज को ऑफन एक फाइनलिटी का टच दिया जाता है एज इफ वट दे से इज द लास्ट वर्ड ऑन नेताजी एज इफ दे आर द नो ऑल्स ऑन नेताजी बट द ट्रूथ इज दैट देर इज नो सिंगल आइडेंटिटी कॉल्ड बोस फैमिली जैसे कि आप जानते हैं नेताजी के बहुत सारे भाई बहन थे इट वॉज अ बिग फैमिली एंड देयर चिल्ड्रेन हैव ऑल्सो ब्रांचड आउट तो different people have different views and over the years over the decades ye views alag alag tarike se develop hua hai alag alag streams mein gaye hain so let's have a look at how uh, things have developed aaj isliye main ye program bana raha hu kyunki more or less a large section of the bose family have converged on the opinion that netaji died in 1945 and the so called remains which are preserved in the rinkoji temple in japan they should be brought back to india par hamesha aisa nahi tha so what changed and how did it changed we will deal only with those family members who had a prominent role in the public life so let's start with sar chandra bose elder brother of netaji subhas's mejda who was the closest to him as a guide mentor as his financial caretaker what was sarath's reaction when sarath first heard the news of the plane crash and the alleged plane crash and netaji's death in that plane crash obviously he had no reason to doubt it and he was he broke down he wrote a very touching uh, entry in his diary lamenting Uh, that how much more sacrifice the country would have to make to gain freedom this was 1945 he was uh, 1945 august and he was still in jail in kunur after that he was released uh, in september and he came back and carried on but sarath was a very well connected man internationally so he kept uh, interacting with his contacts overseas within the country talking to people and he also interrogated the leading members of the international army unko sarath ne bahut bariki se interrogate kiya especially habibur rahman and he gradually came to see the loopholes the inconsistencies in their statements in their descriptions and he developed strong doubts he started disbelieving their version so one of the earliest uh, news items that we get to see about sarath bose expressing uh, doubt not really expressing doubt but almost seems convinced that subhash did not die in the plane crash was in 1948 when he met the deputy premier of vietnam who was visiting india at that time so he met the deputy premier of vietnam and asked for his help to find out subhash from then onwards he continued to give uh, uh, statements to the press and express his opinion that subhas was alive and that he would come back to india in the right time but his biggest statement came in the form of a front page news in his own newspaper the nation of 7th october 1949 sarath died in february 1950 so just a few months before his death sarath made an astounding announcement that netaji was not only alive but he knew where sarat knew where he was that netaji was in communist china ask 
today's generation as to why Sarath said that, they would rubbish it by saying that, oh, it was his belief, oh, he was just trying to pressurize the Nehru government, but that is not the truth. The truth is that Sarath had collected this information from his network, from his source. The details of this we have provided in Conundrum, which we obtained from the declassified files. So do read Conundrum for the full account of this short video. Now, that was Sarath's statement. And as I said, he passed away in 1950, February 1950. Had he continued to live for some more years, probably the whole mystery would have taken a different turn. Now, let's look at the other most important person in Suhas's life at that time who could have had a good idea as to what had happened. This is Emilia Schenkel, Netaji's wife. Emilia, again like Sarat, when she first received the information, she believed it. She broke down. She wrote letters to her friends saying that Suhas was no more. But gradually, she also started getting information. She also started collecting information from different sources, which appeared very credible to him, credible to her, I'm sorry. Now, that gradually started changing her mind. And in 1951, when a journalist from Kolkata's Anand Bazaar Patrika uh, visited her in Vienna, she wrote a very intriguing note for that journalist. She wrote, May God grant him many more years to live and fulfill his sacred oath. Now, this is definitely not the words of a widow. It kind of gives the feeling that she not only knew Suvash was alive, but she knew what he was up to. It gives that sense. Emilia continued with this belief hereafter. She never believed, she never accepted the story of the plane crash. In 1971, when filmmaker Navina Sundaram got in touch with her to get her views on the plane crash and Suvas's death in it, Emilia told uh, Navina Sundaram over phone that she believed Suhas did not die in the plane crash. Even his wife Emilia Schenkel feels... No, on the flugzeugunglück I have never believed, and I believe it still today. Warum? Weil er schon oft genug verschwunden war und wiedergekommen ist. Aber ich bin überzeugt, dass er heute nicht mehr lebt. And just a few months before her death in, in, in March 1996, something very interesting happened. At that time, the external affairs, India's external affairs minister, Pranam Mukherjee, was visiting Germany. And she wanted to meet Emilie and the daughter, Anita to discuss the possibility of bringing back the so-called remains of Netaji from Japan to India. According to Surya Kumar Bose, who was a grandson of Sarat Chandra Bose, Emilia was so disgusted by the whole attitude taken up by Pranam Mukherjee and his insistence to bring back the ashes that she could not tolerate his presence in her house anymore. So he had to be taken out for lunch by Anita and her husband. So till the end of her life, Emily did not accept the story of Netaji's death in the plane crash. The question therefore is Anita Fav, Emily's daughter, why is she so intent on proving that Netaji died in the plane crash? The answer might lie in the close uh, relation between Anita and uh, Sushir Kumar Bose, but then she also claims that she had met certain uh, Japanese witnesses regarding the plane crash and she ha found no reason to disbelieve them. The problem is that just meeting some Japanese people, the so-called witness, and accepting their version as the final truth reeks of racism because here we see an emphasis a preference given to foreigners obviously because they are foreigners so they are telling the truth there were many eyewitnesses who have given a different version so why give preference to them to the japanese witnesses who claimed or argued in favor of the 
plane crash. Now, who these witnesses are, we have no idea. She never gave the details, but I can guess from Leonard Gordon's uh, book because she probably, uh, she had mentioned at one place that she had accompanied Leonard Gordon in Japan meeting these witnesses. So some of these witnesses who spoke with Gordon must have been the same people who spoke with her or she might have been present during those interviews. Their accounts are completely contradictory with each other, not only with each other, the, I mean, the, between the Japanese witnesses, but even the same witness has said different things at different points of time. So on what basis she chooses one aspect and wants to believe that aspect, that version is beyond any reason other than a bias or a preconceived notion, uh, it cannot be explained. But as Amir Kumar Bose, Sarath's uh, eldest son and uh, Surya Kumar Bose's father, he told uh, the, the Hindustan Times in 1995 when there was a big discussion going on about bringing the so-called ashes from uh, Japan. Amir Kumar Bose told Hindustan Times about getting Anita's consent to bring the ashes back, that she could not have had any information regarding the plane crash. Her views did not have any probative value and that her views were of no consequence. That was the clear stated position of Omiya Kumar Bose. Now, the person under whose influence Anita uh, developed her uh, views, her opinion, Dr. Sishir Kumar Bose was uh, Sarat Chandra Bose's son and uh, initially he also had his doubts but then something changed after apparently after 1965 or around that time uh, apparently he visited Taiwan and uh, he changed his mind. Now initially Sishir Kumar Bose was also very uh, annoyed with the Congress party with the Congress government that they were suppressing the role of uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose and just playing up, highlighting the roles played by Mahatma Gandhi and Jawaharlal Nehru. But something changed and then Sushir Kumar Bose became a big fan of Indira Gandhi. Sushir finally joined the Congress party and contested the West Bengal Legislative Assembly elections in 1982. He won. This uh, link with Indira Gandhi did not survive for long because uh, Indira Gandhi was assassinated in 1984. And once Rajiv Gandhi was in power, uh, Sushir was a bit miffed with Rajiv Gandhi's attitude towards uh, Netaji's legacy, how he treated Netaji's legacy in the history of Congress. So, uh, and, and Pranam Mukherjee, uh, the man who was uh, close to him, he was also out of favor. So together with Pranam Mukherjee, Sushir was formed uh, a new party, the Rashtriya Samajwadi Congress. Sushir again contested the assembly elections in 1987 as an independent member as an independent politician, but lost it. This, however, did not end their association with the Congress. Rather, it deepened because the mantle went over to Krishna Bose, his wife. Krishna Bose successfully contested uh, the parliamentary elections in 1996 from Jadapur in a Congress ticket. Thereafter, uh, she joined the breakaway group of uh, Mantra Banerjee, the Trinamool Congress. And she uh, also held the same opinion, the same view as Sushil Bose. The surprising part is that although they were so convinced, they were so uh, absolutely sure that Netaji had died and that their research had proved it to them, they never appeared in front of a commission, neither the Khosla Commission nor the Mukherjee Commission. When summoned, they feigned ignorance. They said that they did not have any first-hand information, they did not have any thing to contribute, so they did not want to appear before the commission they were not keen to help at all but from the outside they kept on criticizing those including justice Mukherjee, who held that netaji did not die in the plane crash after dr sishir bose and uh, krishna bose their son sugata bose has continued to uh, propagate that view that section of the family's view that netaji died in 1945 and uh, uh, Sugat Bose, a Harvard uh, professor, also became uh, a politician, turned into a Congress politician and has been in the Trinamool Congress camp, which is nothing but a breakaway of the Congress party. 
because of this break away from the mainstream family stand which questioned netaji's death in 1945 or in most cases refused to accept it created a sort of uh, antagonism between the sishir bose faction of the family and the others now this has been manifested in various ways in 2016 for example chandra kumar bose tweeted that the netaji research bureau is run by the stooges of congress now netaji research bureau is the organization which was set up by sishir bose and uh, along with aminat bose and uh, aminat bose was thrown out of it by sishir kumar bose in the late 1960s so the tussle began between these uh, two branches of the family at that from that time this feud so chandra kumar bose aminat bose's son tweeted in 2016 that the netaji research bureau is run by the stooges of congress and that the central government must take it over but more damning were the views expressed uh, by sishir's own sister chitra ghosh who around the same time when the declassification phase was going on told times of india that the netaji research bureau or in other words sishir bose and his family they changed their view to toe the congress line in exchange for financial gains this is the view from inside the family now aminat bose's uh, journey is also quite interesting he was quite close uh, to netaji he was quite clo- close to subhash bose and uh, it is in one of his famous letters to aminat where subhash bose wrote that no one has done more harm to me personally than uh, pandit nehru so aminat was fully aware of the equation the relation between subhash bose and uh, jawaharlal nehru now something strange happened in around 1955 this this letter uh, comes out from the declassified files uh, from the police snooping that was going on now we find aminat bose writing to emilio shankel that he met pandit jawaharlal nehru and decided to join the congress party because he felt that the congress was taking up the socialistic program which was similar or the same as propagated by netaji himself so he believed that although the congress was not playing up netaji or not taking his name properly but nonetheless they were following his ideology and hence he had decided to join pandit nehru Uh, well i leave the judgment to you i am not passing any judgment i am just giving you facts so he joined the congress party under pandit nehru now later on things obviously didn't work out so he contested the parliamentary elections in 1967 uh, on a forward block ticket and he won from the arambagh seat now after being elected as a forward block candidate uh, from arambagh in 1967 aminat bose uh, uh, kind of started forming uh, or planning to form a new political party called azadin sangh and uh, this was not obviously not liked by the forward block party and uh, uh, the, the there was they separated i i don't know i don't know exactly how the separation came whether he was expelled or he left the party i don't know i don't have the information but they were not together anymore so in the 1971 elections aminat bose contested as an independent from the alipur parliamentary seat in kolkata and he lost miserably so as an independent he contested he lost the election then when the janta party came to power he uh, joined the janta party and uh, was appointed as uh, india's uh, ambassador high commissioner india's ambassador to burma in 1984 he again contested from the calcutta northwest seat the parliamentary elections and again back to forward block this time again he contested on the forward block ticket but again he lost now as far as netaji's death mystery is concerned uh, aminat bose was not satisfied with what the shanos committee did he wrote clearly to pandit nehru in 1964 that uh, this matter should be investigated by a supreme court judge assisted by other judges pandit nehru agreed saying that uh, this matter should be investigated there should be a judicial investigation but he was not sure whether this uh, a, a sitting supreme court judge should be assigned this task 
so aminat bose was not uh, ready to accept because he he felt shanwas committee did not have the judicial capability to decide on the to, to assess the evidence or the witness accounts the testimonies everything that came in front of them in the khosla commission aminat bose played a more active role by that time he had started uh, voicing his opinion that netaji did not die in the plane crash in the commission his uh, arguments were more uh, balanced but after the commission was over and it came out with the finding that netaji died in 1945 aminat bose uh, took a more determined more definitive stand so he kept uh, giving statements and writing letters to uh, political leaders and uh, leaders of the country uh, to the effect that uh, netaji did not die and the investigation should be done properly and he also started giving statements saying that he had uh, he was getting information from different sources that pointed definitely to, to the fact that netaji did not die in 1990 omio bos told uh, press reporters that uh, sarath had received information that subhas might have been executed in soviet russia or he might have been held in a concentration camp there so this statement actually shows that sarath was whatever sarath chandra bose was saying he was saying on the basis of information that he was receiving from different parts of the world strangely this aspect was not brought up by omnath bose uh, when he argued in front of the kosla commission on the contrary he tried to block the deposition of satyanarayan sinha the most vociferous uh, advocate of netaji's uh, death in russia or netaji's presence in russia at that time aminat bose claimed that sarath bose had sought sardar patel's help to find out the truth and that a letter was sent to sarvapalli radhakrishnan who was then the ambassador uh, in soviet union but apparently there was no uh, response no reply from dr radhakrishnan so this comes from aminat bose in 1990 in the same year that is uh, 1990 may aminath bose along with his two brothers his elder brother ashoknath bose and his younger brother subrat bose who later on became a member of parliament on forward block ticket the three of them wrote a letter a joint letter to prime minister vishwanath pratap singh and this letter made some astounding claims the view of dr radha binod pal the indian member in the Tokyo war crimes tribunal was also given that he had apparently told sir chandra bose that he had, according to his evidence netaji did not die there was no plane crash netaji did not die then came the story of uh, sir chandra bose's interrogation of mz kiani habibur rahman etc and how sir chandra bose uh, reached the conclusion from that that there was no plane crash the letter also mentioned that how far this went back in the family how far this disbelief non acceptance went back in the family it said that during the lifetime of uh, uh, one of their uncles sailesh the younger brother of subhash chandra bose all the children of 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 uh, the brothers at that time signed a statement declaring that they did not accept the plane crash theory so the family in other words was unanimous they were unified in their rejection of the plane crash the brothers also mentioned in their letter how the janta party government under moraji desai had rejected the findings of the shanwas committee and the kosla commission the letter ended by saying we are firmly of the view that to bring the ashes now lying in the rinkoji temple in tokyo to india as ashes of netaji subhash chandra bose will be an act of sacrilege which should not be allowed by the people and government of india